just a little bit, even though they were you know, spectacular in the first half, having had three goals ruled out for offside. Um, with that loss, you just got the feeling that, okay, maybe they can breathe now, maybe they go again, um, and now that they've won this, how much pressure do you think this now takes off of them even more, especially with the, the weight of expectation that Lionel Messi carries? Well, it will take some pressure off, but I believe regardless of the pressure, you're in a tournament, you lost your first game, it is a must-win game. And these gentlemen understand that. So whether there was pressure or not, if you lose, you go home. That's a different kind of playing now because it, no matter what, you're going to find that, as Coach said, they kept on going because they know that this is probably the most important game to keep them in the tournament. So. Yeah, Coach Rademachers, um, we, we talk about the legacy of Lionel Messi a lot. Um, you know, the last World Cup, we saw him rise to the occasion again to get his team out of a spot of bother in the group stages. Um, of course, uh, in the World Cup in Brazil, got all the way to the final, didn't get over the hump then. Um, but when we're balancing that, that's a delicate balance in discussing his legacy and whenever he rises to the occasion for Argentina. Was this somewhat of a legacy-defining match for him? Um, no, I wouldn't say so. You know, I think when it comes to Messi now, he has, has done so much um, for his country and for his club that uh, it's going to be the knockout stages where it's going to be the decisive moments. Um, as but, but if you don't win this, um, possibly you don't it, get it. It's there. part of it, you know, but just are like the wins against Osasuna, Osasuna in, 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 in La Liga and you don't hear about those moments. <laughs> it's the matches against Madrid that matter and, and in this World Cup, it's the knockout stages against the big teams that he needs to step up. And if you lose, it's because of Messi, but if you win the first round, it's what you're supposed to do. It's only on the knockout stages when you step up and you make your team win that now really you build that legacy. And, Really, I think the only way even to get Messi's legacy even bigger is to reach the final and win it. Yeah, I mean, he's stumbled at that final hurdle before. Coach Shavar Thomas, um, having gotten this victory, you saw what it meant to the, the Argentines and we saw the pictures. Um, you know, they were very happy, obviously, to get on the board. But the thing is, the group is still wide open. Um, do they need another performance like this from Messi and the like going up against Poland in their final group game? Or uh, what sort of mood should they be in, you think, especially given that the pressure really is still on? I mean, they, they should be in the frame of mind of, hey, this is it. We have to qualify for the next round. So it's all or nothing. So the Poland game should be your best game. And then from there on, it's anything. So they have to go in knowing that this is going to be the best game, or game of our lives. Every one of those players. Yeah. I want to come back to the discussion about Messi's legacy as well. We've got, of course, Liam Henriquez and Coach Miguel Coley online. We're going to take a quick break on a final whistle. When we come back, we have more discussion for you. Stay with us. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi, and Burger King. Grace Foods got the taste that moves you. Yard and abroad, it moves you. Grace Foods, the taste that moves you. Fuel the vibes in the time when they be a Grace Foods from the end. Yeah, the taste that moves you. From the spices, move you. Everybody shout out Grace. Grace Foods needs the guts. For the vibe guys, we love. The taste that moves you. has a taste that everyone loves. That's why when we move, we move with grace. Fool! You just get one. Are you more hungry, man? We are the king of it. Like how we are the king of burgers. You see when Burger King goes so boom, and they make the beef patty well seasoned up and put it on the open flame, then they go so juicy pickles, tomatoes, freshly cut onions, crispy lettuce, classic. Every other burger still stuck at square one. Beam! Three juicy waffle right on time. Taste rules your way at Burger King. The best tasting burgers under the sun. <laughs> the season of giving. Enjoy enough pickings this Christmas with a chance to pick and win your share of over 16 million in cash and prizes. Plus, get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Brought Bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. We have it. Live. Days, weeks, months and years. 
It's never too late. It's all in one spot. Hey folks, good morning and welcome. In food, drop in I food on make us see our own. Live streaming from all brands, thousands of hours of video on demand. Discover the island's best by downloading the app or typing onespotmedia.com. The Gliana Premium will excite your digital media experience, satisfy your appetite for exclusive stories and special access to editors fora, videos, podcasts, and much more. To subscribe, go to jamaica-gliana.com slash premium and select the eGliana or website option. Welcome to your new digital experience, the Gliana Premium. Prices start as low as U.S. $2.99. Sign up today and keep up with the Gleaners A-Team. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi and Burger King. All right, welcome back now to Final Whistle. Let's just wrap up the discussion on Argentina. I want to get Coach Miguel Coley and Liam in on the discussion about legacy when we talk about Lionel Messi. Um, this game today, Coach Rademacher says, not a legacy-defining game. Such are the lofty heights that Lionel Messi has to live up to um, that Coach Rademacher says he can score in every game leading up to the final. And if he doesn't do it in the final and deliver and Argentina don't lift the cup, uh, we won't be able to say that he is the greatest of all time. Coach Miguel Coley, I want you to come in here and tell me, how do you weigh in on this discussion about legacy and Lionel Messi and um, where these games will fit in, in terms of digging his team out of trouble? Well, um, first of all, I agree with um, um, Coach, um, Coach um, about that, in terms of if, if he doesn't win the, 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 the World Cup, he will not surpass um, Maradona in terms of um, being the, the greatest player from Argentina. Um, you, you have seen him being in the Copa America finals, being in the World Cup finals, and didn't win. And he, because of that, he has not attained that title. Um, the Argentinian um, result and you know will, will depend a lot on him, a lot on him. You see, today he he basically um, carved out the win for Argentina by just getting one chance, one shot on goal. And, and, and he made a difference. So he, he, he's, he's a key player, he's a pivotal player. But what I love is that the team wants to win it for, for, for Lian Messi. What is important now is that the, the like of Demar, he stepped up today. I think he had a better game than the one he had against Saudi Arabia. But he stepped up. He took a, a, a lot of the pressure um, off of Lian Messi. And he, was, he allowed the team to play um, around um, the, 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 the Mexican team. What I mean by that, rather than playing playing the, the vertical pass through the middle, he gave that option that the team could play around um, the, the Mexican, put the ball in the wide areas, and he made some very good decisions, especially with um, players running in the space. So I believe Messi has to win the World Cup to become the, the greatest player for Argentina, and um, he will be very critical, as we all know, um, for their World Cup fortune. You know, it's funny to hear coaches say this, because I often hear coaches uh, not wanting to single out a player and talk about the team's performance uh, as a whole. So it's, it's interesting to hear coaches weigh in on this dynamic and talk about Lionel Messi as an individual um, and how much what he does uh, is going to factor into the discussion. Liam, your thoughts on, on Messi's legacy? Um, I mean, he still has a lot to do, um, but the, the, the kind of expectations that are on him do these games count any at all in your mind towards how people view him? No, I agree with Coach Eric. You know, yes, these games count. Like, if you know, they, they lost today, the they were out. They're not making it to round of 16. Just like the La Liga game, you know, against, you know, the Granadas and stuff where he won. Like, you need, you need to win them. But no one's going to remember, the, you know, this game or anything back to Me uh, Messi's legacy. You know, it would, it would be a different if, you know, they were two loves down and he had come back and scored all three goals. Then, yes. But, you know, he scored one goal, they won two loves. Like, no, like not much people, are, when I think back to Mex uh, Messi's legacy, are going to think about this specific game. And yeah, he does have to win, you know, the World Cup to just to top off his legacy. You know, if if he doesn't win the World Cup, he will still be the goat in my eyes. But to really top it off for him, he does have to win the World Cup. You know, he's already made it to the final. He's already won the Copa America, so this is like the final thing for him. So yeah, he, he has to win the World Cup to top off his legacy. All right, uh, that leaves the group interestingly poised. This result for Argentina, Poland, 
uh, on top with four points. The Argentines have three points. Of course, Saudi Arabia also has three points. And Mexico, they have a single point heading into the final set of games in this group. So that will be interesting indeed. I want to switch focus now and go over to Group D, where the holders, France, they became the first team to qualify for the round of 16 uh, with their victory uh, today, um, coming back from behind and winning that game by two goals to one. Um, the French, well, they didn't come back from behind. It was, at, it was at level at one stage, and then they won the game 2-1. Uh, Kylian Mbappe, once again, showing uh, his phenomenal talent at these World Cup finals. Let me start with you, Sharona Forrester. We've been talking about legacy. We're going to talk about that a little bit more later on. Uh, but how impressed are you by this French team, especially when they've been in tough moments so far? Well, this was definitely a tough moment uh, in the beginning of the game. And I think they, they held their heads and they were still very confident um, even after Denmark scored. And I think the Mbele? Mbappe? Mbele. Debele. Oh, Dembele. Debele was just brilliant, running up and down, creating opportunities, uh, walking through people <laughs> with the ball. He was absolutely brilliant. The whips that he sent inside, uh, it, it's a lot to look <clears throat> forward to um, from this French team. Yeah, Coach Rademacher, um, you know, you talk about the, the, the champions knowing what it takes to, to win. You know, we know they've had a plethora of injuries to quality players, but their squad is so deep that it hasn't seemed to have affected them, certainly not in terms of results. Um, but again, in the two games they've played so far, they've been in a, a few tough moments. This game was equal at one stage when Denmark equalised, um, but they just seem to find a way to, to get over the hump. Yeah, uh, I mean, when we look at the players like um, Hernandez, and uh, Kante, Pogba, uh, Benzema, the main players that kind of were out, um, it's, it's, it's the, the other guys that were still there that really pull the headlines and make them, them look great. Today I look at Mbappe really, I mean you have Mbappe and Dembele and what I like about France is they are able to penetrate with passing um, but they can beat a player 1v1. So if a defence is locking you down and they sit back here, like what we saw even with uh, Tunisia today um, and they couldn't break down, they couldn't break them down, then you know go see um, Australia just get comfortable in defending. France against uh, Denmark now, they're able with Dembele and Mbappe to break them down either way. So it's really amazing to see that our Griezmann uh, was playing a much better game today than from before. So I'm happy to see him getting in it as well. And now, uh, yeah, as I say, the, the, the players that were still there performing great. But uh, we look at Chouameni in the midfield, who I think is really doing a great job so far in the World Cup. Uh, and even Thierry Hernandez gave another assist today with a great run into the box there. So no complaints for uh, the French supporters so far, I think. Yeah, and I think it speaks to their depth when um, Chouameni comes in. You, you mentioned the loss of Kante, Pogba, um, stars of the last World Cup mm -hmm. victory. Um, Chouameni as a youngster comes in. And um, how you know how good he is, Coach Shavar Thomas, um, is that when Real Madrid uh, lost Casemiro to Manchester United, um, Ancelotti could say, well, I, I'm not worried. I've got Chouameni um, in the midfield. He, and Kamavinga. He, and Kamavinga as well, who's on the bench for France, mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact. So, um, I mean, they have such depth in quality. Uh, Coach Rademacher spoke about, um, you know, Mbappe and um, the way he's able to beat people. Is it that because of Giroud as a target man up front, um, and having Griezmann really pulling the strings, it's really suiting the way Mbappe plays? I wouldn't think so. I just think that he's, he has that talent <laughs> to do it at any, any given time. It doesn't have to do with what they do. You know what I mean? And this, this French team, like I said a couple of days ago, what I'm looking forward for in the World Cup is the teams that play their first game and didn't do so well, I need to see them respond. And then the teams that did well to stamp their class, and I think France did that today. Today's game against Denmark was um, the best um, game so far when I see two teams tactically aware, um, respect each other, you know what I mean, and going at each other. And then the game was decided on a lapse or lack of concentration on all three goals. And it was an evenly contested game. Coach Miguel Coley, what was the difference for you when you assess the French win over Denmark today? Well, I, I, I believe that what the coach did, um, if you notice this game, M Mbappe wasn't um, getting past, but wasn't having any 1v1 because the, 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 the Denmark team play a back five and, you know, the centre back and the wing back every single time. So what the coach did in the second half was to have um, Hernandez um, partner with him. So you, you watch Hernandez going into the assist zone with that inverted run 
and um, Mbappé. So you find that they, they were rotating between him and um, Hernandez a little bit more, having both of them um, attacking, going up a little bit higher. So I think that that made a difference. The Denmark team, however, was, were, was you know, is a very good team, very good team. They made it much difficult for um, the French team. The French team in this game, they, I believe they expend, extend, expended a lot of energy in the, in the first game. With, with with three midfielders going over 11 kilometers so you you realize that even when they lost the ball they were in counter pressing they allowed the denmark team to play out and they drop back so they were a little bit passive uh, in terms of how they play compared to the first game but they knew um what they have to do um they have the key players they the dembele when conan when Coman came on so he had a different element to the game in which he wasn't dribbling inside like dembele he was going to to the side and allow players especially like like they um like they 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 let me pronounce it Rabot Rabiot 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 going <laughs> going into the half space um and that created a, a lot of problem for for the Denmark team but overall it's a good performance not the greatest performance from the French team but football nowadays is so difficult you don't have no space no time and um but a workman like performance yeah, from the Yeah, I, 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 I want to um, get some more comments in here from Shavar and Liam as well. Let's take a quick break though. When we come back, we get a few more words in on that France win over Denmark and then we look at the other games played today. Stay with us on Final Whistle. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi and Burger King. Fool! You just get what? Are you more hungry, man? You are the king of this. Like how I are the king of burgers. This is when Burger King goes so boom and they make the beef patty well seasoned up and put it on the open flame. Then they go so juicy pickles, tomatoes, freshly cut onions, crispy lettuce, classic. Every other burger still stuck at square one. Beam! Three juicy waffles right on time. Taste rules your way at Burger King. The best tasting burgers under the sun. Because <laughs> it's the season of giving, enjoy enough pickings this Christmas with a chance to pick and win your share of over 16 million in cash and prizes. Plus, get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Rata bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. Grace Foods got the taste that moves you. Yard and around it moves you. Grace Foods, the taste that moves you. Fuel the vibes and the time when it be a Grace Foods from the end. Yeah, the taste that moves you. From the spices move you. Everybody shout out Grace. Grace Foods feeds the guts. Put the vibe guys for love. Yeah. The taste that moves you. Grace bringing the food you love. Grace has the taste that everyone loves. That's why when we move, we move with Grace. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi, and Burger King. I'm going to tell our producer, Yannick, to leave the cameras rolling in here during the breaks because I think that's when the conversations uh, do get really, really spicy. Um, I want to get to some more uh, discussions on the games, but for now, uh, we're trying to track down the Maverick. Of course, uh, he's usually on the go, and once again, he is on the go, but where is he? Let's track him down. I never tell me the Maverick. And look here, people. Look here. I never know, say, like, you saw me, I tell you, Lionel Messi, Lionel Messi Nation, big. We in a, we in a second street, trench town. Yeah? And we in a pan bang them corner, yeah? Realist family HQ. And watch your people. A Lionel, hold on, hold on, hold on. A Argentina Nation refined, yeah? These people enjoy our World Cup like nobody before. Yeah? Watch out. This when the goal scored on a while ago. Me feel like in the stadium with them. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Argentina nation, see them there? In all them drugs. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. 
Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, let me talk to the boss with them here. All right, so we just, we just second street. We in a second street in a trench town. Now look here. We there, so I watch a football game. And me never know so much Argentina nation done here, so. What going, big boss? Tell me, tell me how it feel now that Argentina survived and Messi come up with the thing. Um, blessed day, my peoples. Um, Lionel Messi, as you know, the greatest of all time. <laughs> Carry the team from him back and thing and thing. Yes. And we win, so the winner will win now. Yes. If you know, say, you at the World Cup this year, we are winning a good position. Wanna see a tree, Martel? Yeah! Yeah! Can you imagine? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, look here. <laughs> On the go, we in the middle. Hold on, hold on. Look here, look at this. 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 I was going to ask the Maverick about what the atmosphere was like, but that was obvious uh, from those pictures. But what I found interesting is that um, there were a few Brazil fans sneaking their flags into that picture just now. So um, even then, the, the Argentines um, can't have it all their own way. Of course, um, as I said, uh, there are so many uh, Brazil and Argentina fans here in Jamaica. And of course, that's because of their history at the World Cup. Uh, we were talking about that game with France and Denmark. Um, Coach Coley, you made a point about the French midfield. I think Coach uh, Thomas wanted to just join in and chime in there and, and probably extend the discussion a little bit further. Yes, um, Coach Coley, um, you said that um, the French team um, midfield, um, this game as opposed to the one before, um, retreated because of the distance they had um, run in the previous game. But I was going to ask, wouldn't you think that it was a respect factor in terms of, um, you know, coming back behind the ball instead of saying um, they, the, the distance they, they, they chased in the first game? Well, it, it could be. Um, it could be the coach tactic. But um, in many cases in which um, when you lose the ball, you know, when you could counter press based on how I know these players um, tend to play and also in the first game. But when I believe that you can win back the ball, I think... They didn't do this. They basically, they were very passive. They just allowed them to, to pass out the ball. So there were moments in which I believe it wasn't just the tactic. It was a, it was a matter of um, saving, maybe saving their legs. I'm, I could be wrong. But um, so I went ahead and I was looking at the, the, the kilometer. For example, Rabio, he ran 12 point something kilometer. Um, Griezmann, about 11.5. And um, um, too many, I think 11.3 something kilometer. So I went back to, you know, to see what could have been some of the reasons why. And and this is the midfield that I believe have had run the, the most um, kilometer in, in, in their first game. So I, as I said, I can't be wrong. It could be the tactic. It could be a matter of respect. But um, it look, they look very passive. Mbappe, everybody look very passive in terms of how they... Um, how they responded when they were out of position. Coach Coley, I, I wouldn't want to have you as a coach because I know if I fall below that threshold in terms of distance covered, I'm probably going to be on the bench in the next game. Um, Liam, in terms of the French team, they brought in Raphael Varane, I guess, you know, because he was coming back from injury, uh, didn't want to really chance it in the first game. Deschamps decided to bring him in as a starter in this game. Jules Koundé uh, on the right-hand side as well, at right back in this game um, as well. Uh, do you think that we're seeing now, you know, the real defensive uh, back four that the French will go forward with? Uh, do you think there's a place for, for William Saliba, for example? Uh, well, yeah, Van coming in, you know, you know, he came off an injury with uh, playing with Manchester United. I do believe with his experience, you know, playing 2018 and 2014 World Cup in France, he will um, continue to start games for France. Um, William Saliba, you know, as I had, yes, had a great season with Arsenal, but like I said earlier, I think we're on, it's in Brown's place and Upokekamo has not done anything wrong. Um, so I think Saliba might have to you know, hold the bench, right? As of now, uh, Kunde, with a, young, a great young talent that has emerged in recent years. I also think, yeah, he was uh, sticking in the lineup. Um, you know, we talk about French injuries that, you know, Benzema has can't hit the plug, but, but they also, you know, not forget there are the brands and stuff that are in the squad and are injured. 
you know, not injured, but you know, not fully fit, and they are starting to come back now, which is good for the France team, and uh, they are also playing very well. Yeah, they broke a curse, uh, Sharona. Um, four of the last five tournaments, the winner from the previous tournament has gone out in the group stage, including, remember, France in 2002, having won in 98, went out in the group stage. Um, now we're having, you know, this situation where the defending champion has already booked their ticket into the round of 16. Your thoughts on France's um, chances of retaining their title? That's not easy to do. Only a couple of teams have ever done that in World Cup history. Well, I don't, I don't think they will win, but I know they'll put up a good performance. Um, not a French fan, but um, what I saw from Mbappe today, you know, I don't know. He's just so quick. Uh, the players had to kick him down because they knew once he gets away, uh, it's going to be problems. So I think I'm really looking forward to the knockout stages. Um, it's going to be very, very interesting to see the different tactics, and I'd love to see more goals. Uh, in the next round. And let me stay with you for uh, Poland versus uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, the Polish um, getting the victory, two goals to nil, um, really breaking down that Saudi Arabia resistance. You know, Saudi Arabia obviously riding high from their opening match win over Argentina. Your assessment of the Poland's performance in that game? So yesterday we made note that to win, right, uh, Lewandowski would need assistance. And I think that's exactly what he got today. He saw more of the ball and He's one of the top goal scorers. So if you're giving him uh, those options, he will definitely uh, come through and lift the team. And I think they did well today to play together and also not be so passive. You know, they were very aggressive and it was a go-getter kind of spirit today. And I think that works for them. Coach Rademakers, Robert Lewandowski breaking his uh, World Cup goal scoring drought, getting on the score sheet finally. He also assisted the first goal. What did you think of his performance for the Polish today? Um, no, as, as Sharona said, you know, it's, it's important that you get your, your best player more on the ball um, because you get him in the game and, and he brings more quality to the game. Um, I think it was uh, Saudi Arabia that still um, kind of took it to the game and, and, and didn't back down. They really showed some, some courage and braveness like we saw from the first game. Uh, but I think uh, Poland was able to capitalize on the spaces they gave away. Um, so that is something that I think was crucial in this match eventually where Saudi Arabia, yes, they, they, they gave it to them, and yes, they put up a good fight, but they gave away too much as a, as a unit that, um, that don't want to concede in, in, in that game to kind of keep that momentum going and get a point. And they did give away the space, and Poland used it. Did Poland um, change your mind any at all about uh, their uh, chances of progressing from this group, Coach Price? No, I, I have them as one of the teams to come out of the group. I, I, I think they, they really battled the early wave from Saudi Arabia. And it, to be quite honest, um, goalkeeper Wozniak Chesney was the one that kept them in the game, you know, making a double save of the first penalty save and then the rebound to save again. I, I think he kept them in the game. And throughout the game, um, the Saudis really tested him and he came up all trumps. So after a while, I, I believe that the, the Polish team decided that, look, if Chesney is doing the job back there, we need to start doing it up front. And they started to um, penetrate the, the Saudi Arabia team. And it's good, like... Somebody like Lewandowski got his first goal. He's a quality player and he needs to be on the ball more. I think as the game grew, the Polish team tried to play through him and they got several opportunities. He got his goal and could have gotten more. He provided assists for the first goal. So I think Poland are in a good position right now, but the zone is still very much open with one more round of games to go. It is open, um, Coach Thomas. The Saudi Arabia team, as uh, Coach Rademach has said, really took it to Poland in the first half. Poland were really weathering the storm um, a lot. And as Coach Price said, Chesney keeping uh, his team in the game with a couple of brilliant saves. Um, Saudi Arabia probably kicking themselves, you think, after this contest? I mean, they should, um, or maybe they, they're just a wasp. They have one sting, they sting Argentina, and then they, they flew away and die. No, no, credit to them, no. They must be kicking themselves because they're a solid group putting up um, very good performance. We see out there, but guess what? This is the biggest stage. This is the greatest stage. Laps in concentration at any point in time, you're going to get punished. And that's what we see today. Does anybody have any thoughts now on who will go through from this group? Uh, Poland on four points, Argentina three points, Saudi Arabia three Mexico just a single point? 
I can't tell you who's going to go through until all those games are played. Because <laughs> any, anyone... I can do that as well. Anyone, <laughs> no, I, I, to I be honest, any, any one of, of, of um, four teams, if you look at the, the, the matchup, somebody could go through on four points, somebody could go through on six, somebody could go through on five. So it depends on how much the teams go for it in that last game. But right now, I would say Poland are in the pole position. <laughs> uh, no pun intended. Coach Coley, uh, what were your thoughts yeah. on, on the Saudi Arabia performance? Because um, they did seem full of life, full of energy, much like they were against Argentina when they played Poland today. But um, what changed? Where, where was the breakdown? Why weren't they able to come out on top in this one? Well, uh, well they look very lively. And as I expected, um, defeating Argentina... They, they played very well. I think most of the players had more, more than an 80% um, pass um, completion. Um, but what is important was the, the final details. Yes, you, you, you see um, the Polish team capitalized a lot, especially in the wide areas, in the half space. I think that was very important. So when you look at the crosses for Saudi Arabia, they made what? They made 18 crosses, but two completed. When you look at um, Poland, 15 crosses, seven completed. The goalkeeper distribution for, and um, Coach Price mentioned how pivotal he was, but also with the ball, his distribution was fantastic. Most of the ball that he was, he, he, from a tactical point, point of view, it was going very long. So once he had the ball, it was not like playing to the center back, he was going direct. So you found Lewandowski, he made about 35 offers for the ball. And in behind, he received about 18 balls. So what they were doing basically were, was getting, um, Getting getting to the, the Saudi Arabian defense as quickly as possible, putting them under pressure. And in this in, in this World Cup, what is important is that the centre back, the, the wing backs, the, you have to constantly put them on under pressure. And you see in, in the end it paid dividend. Look at the level the level level dusky goal, um lapsing concentration. You look at the goal that he well, he missed another lapsing concentration concentration. And it's about putting this defender under pressure. Even if you have third three percentage of the ball. What is important is that you consistently put the, the, the central defense, you put the back four or whatever, the back five under. And I think the Polish team did that and it paid dividends. Maybe it's because of the announcement that uh, the team were all going to get Rolls Royces <laughs> after their victory against Argentina. So everybody um, sort of got laid back. Liam, what were your thoughts on the game between Saudi Arabia and Poland? Uh, well, no, I think Saudi Arabia were the better team in the game. Uh, you know, I said yesterday that Poland are probably going to you know, be on the back foot play defensively. Not that they sat back, but, uh, you know, sorry, they had more possession and had more shots. Um, as for Poland, they just, they're good, but they, I mean, they need to get the ball to Lewandowski more. You know, they have a, you know, we know Mati Cash is a nice crossing him. There were times where you could see the frustration on Lewandowski and you saw the relief when he finally got that World Cup goal. Saudi Arabia, you know, they are missing a, a few key players and they should have got the the uh, ball in the back and they really you know they're going to feel they're kicking themselves especially after getting a great start against Argentina dream start and then they don't even get the point from the second game they're really upset um, so, terrible mistake in the second goal um, for Lewandowski to you know score his goal and so Saudi Arabia are not going to feel great at all in Poland they're going to be very happy, you know static after this win all right, I want to go around the table as well on the Tunisia versus Australia contest. Australia getting that win, Coach Rademacher, mm. by a goal to nil. Now have three points in that group. They're right behind France. France already through. Interestingly poised for who joins France, but what were your thoughts on that Australian performance? Um, I thought that, um, you know, eventually a good win for Australia, a much needed win, of course. Um, I thought it was an interesting game where I think as the second half kind of passed by, because got the, Australia got the early goal and. Um, Australia got comfortable with sitting back and I thought Tunisia was kind of, uh, yes, they took more control of the game. Um, they put in a midfield at halftime, which I thought was a, was a great tactical substitution to get more control of the game. Uh, but at the end of the day, Australia was too comfortable sitting back with their, with their defenders and sitting in that block and Tunisia wasn't really able to create much. Uh, so I thought Australia did that very well defensively to hold off that pressure and um, get that important win. Yeah, grandstand finish incoming now for the Danes um, if they're to qualify with France from this group. Uh, so what happens on that final uh, day of the group will be very, very interesting. Uh, we're going to take a break. We'll open the phone lines, uh, by the way, um, so our viewers can interact with our expert team. The number to call is 876-733-2461-6. 876 
733-246126. Sukum. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi and Burger King. Grace Foods got the taste that moves you. Yard and abroad it moves you. Grace Foods, the taste that moves you. Fuel the vibes in the time when it be a Grace Foods from the end. Yeah, the taste that moves you. From the spices move you. Everybody shout out Grace. When the food sweet, we dance. For the vibe guys, we love. Yeah. The taste that moves you. Has a taste that everyone loves. That's why when we move, we move with grace. <laughs> season of giving. Enjoy enough pickings this Christmas with a chance to pick and win your share of over 16 million in cash and prizes. Plus, get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Brother bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. <laughs> season of giving. Enjoy enough pickings this Christmas with a chance to pick and win your share of over 16 million in cash and prizes. Plus, get 25% off a 7 or 28 day Prime Brata bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. Final Whistle brought to you by Digicel, Grace, Pepsi and Burger King. All right, welcome back now to Final Whistle. So uh, we're going to have a look at a press conference here, a very important press conference because uh, Roberto Martinez was speaking about uh, the fitness level of his uh, big striker, Romelu Lukaku, who, of course, uh, the Belgians are relying on his return. So let's listen to this. All right, not yet, not ready yet, um, but there are indications that there are good signs uh, for Lukaku. Um, so Martinez... Uh, should be relatively happy. Um, Belgium not necessarily looking overly convincing so far, Coach Rademacher. Um, are they missing that, uh, that that main man? You think? Um, I mean, it helps them. Lukaku has a lot of quality, um, so it, it would definitely help them. Even in their structure, their whole approach to it. We saw it even last World Cup because it's, it's still very much a similar team. And um, when they they're under pressure in those moments, it becomes crucial to them. I remember the Brazil match over there. Uh, every time they were under pressure, they were able to get it out to Lukaku and he takes off the pressure. I think Coach Coley was mentioning it earlier. Um, you know, when you get tired in those moments like Mexico today, it becomes crucial that when you get the ball, you actually can hold up a little longer. So I think that is important what he brings uh, outside, of course, his goal scoring quality up top. Um, so, yeah, it, it will, be a, will be a nice thing for them to, to add him back to their, um, to their squad that can play. Yeah, Sharona, um, Coach Rademacher spoke about the importance of Lukaku in that last World Cup where they eliminated uh, Brazil and, and the key role he played. Um, but they talk about the Belgium team and the golden generation not winning anything. Of course, they finished third at the last World Cup. Um, is Lukaku going to be crucial to their efforts uh, to win the World Cup? Well, based on what, uh, how they performed in that first game, uh, most definitely, uh, we are seeing more and more that that final third has to be tidy, right? Has to be, uh, the person has to be aggressive, they have to be accurate and on target more often than not um, to, get, to get through and the, the, the groups are tight. So you want some more goals to push up your goal difference because it's gonna come down to the nitty gritty. Yeah, Shavar, you were a big defender. I'm sure you wouldn't <laughs> have fancied facing a, a big target man like Romelu Lukaku. I mean, it would be a tough, it would be a tough com um, competition. I mean, but I'll come out on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean the, they really need him because um, I think if he was in the, the game against Canada, maybe they it would have been a comfortable win for them. You know, he'd uh, be able to put away a couple of chances. But um, let's see how the future, um, the next couple of days goes for him.
Yeah, and um, Coach Andrew Price, if, if you had a Romelu Lukaku type striker uh, at Humble Lion, you would be um, <laughs> dominating the goal scoring charts, charts in the Jamaica Premier League. Without a doubt. <laughs> but um, I, I feel Martinez won't play Lukaku until it's definitely necessary for him to play. He wants him to rest as much to get his fitness back and to be up to speed where he can contribute. So the longer he keeps him out, the better for him. Um, it was deliberate for him to carry him to the World Cup, even with an injury, knowing that he had an injury. But I think he'll keep him out as long as possible. Um, you know, the Belgian team has a, a lot of depth. You know, we haven't seen people like Mertens, um, Tarzan Hazard. We haven't seen a lot of players. So, you know, it's one game and they have three points. They didn't look particularly good in that first game um, against Canada. Um, but they got the three points. And that's what it, a tournament is to get the required points that you continue to move on. And they were able to get that three points. Let's see how they look tomorrow. Yeah, they play Morocco at eight. Coach Miguel Coley, do you bring a Romelu Lukaku in before he's 100% or do you continue uh, to rest him, as Coach Price said, until he's back to full fitness? I, I wait until he's back to full fitness. You don't want to risk him. Um, you cannot win the competition in the first round. It's important you, you get through the first round, definitely. But the, he would have believed that he has the, 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 the ammunition to get through the, to the first round without um, a Lukaku. Yeah, Kevin De Bruyne is uh, a main man pulling the strings for the Belgians. Let's listen to what he had to say. Um, I try to help my team handle the team the best that I can do. And, you know, I get, like I said before, sometimes I get very agitated because I'm a, I'm a perfectionist and I want everything to, to be really good and I like to play good football. But I also know that I have to adapt to my teammates and that I have to play with them and help them and that's what I try to do as much as possible and you know I think for a lot of years and games I've, I've done a good job and I think I can still help this team go forward and that's the only thing I can do for them. All right we know how important he is Kevin De Bruyne to Belgium's uh, chances of winning this World Cup. We do have a caller online he is Simon from Kingston or I'm, I'm assuming it's a him, Salmon from Kingston. Thanks for joining us on Final Whistle. Yes, hello. Yes, how are you doing? I'm okay. All right, which game do you want to talk about? Ah, uh, the Poland game. You want to talk about the Poland game? Interesting, yeah. given that Argentina played the last game of the day. But what about it caught your eye? No, man, the, Poland, the Polish team reminds me of some, you know, them old-time, doggy type of team, you know? Staying at the game, catch you on the counter. I enjoy those type of playing. Oh, yeah? Who's your team? Huh? Who's your team? My team is not at the World Cup. Italy? Yeah. Oh, Italy. <laughs> mm. Coach Thomas said Jamaica. Uh, also, I, I can see why you like Italy. You like dogged teams <laughs> who are not very enterprising in their play. Um, you think Poland will make it to the next uh, round of the, of the competition? Yeah, they should make it. I feel Argentina is tailor made for them. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. Wow, so you have you have Argentina going out at the group stage? Well, but I don't want them going out, you know, but why to come to that team then? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Tom, any other thoughts on, on the World Cup and on anything you've seen so far? Uh, uh, two other teams. Uh, different teams different team look okay. You know, um, I want to see how the Brazilian look against um, Shakira then. Oh, you know? okay, well, we'll see that, of course, um, yeah. and much more. And our experts because here will help I, us to break I, it down. Shakira is a type of player. If you are in the game, if you, if his team is in the game with all like Milal and all of them, he can hurt you. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I don't... He has, that, he has that ability. Interesting perspective. Thanks for your call, Simon. All right, um, we want to talk about uh, the other games on tomorrow as well. Uh, just quickly get your thoughts on Spain, Germany. Let me start with Liam on this one. That's a biggie tomorrow, Spain versus Germany. The Germans in a spot of bother. Um, how do you see that one going? Uh, I see a draw. Um, this German team has, has always been an effective team. It doesn't play the most attractive football, but they get done what they need right. to do. Um, you know, we know if they lose tomorrow, they're out. So, but the Spain team is also very, very good. So, I see the German team um, getting 
Yeah. They're gonna they're gonna want to win. They're gonna go for the win. But this, we saw this Spain team against Costa Rica. They're fantastic. So I expect expect Spain to be the better team in the game. Dominate possession and stuff. But Germany will get that draw that easy. Coach Coley, how do you see it playing out? Well, it's going to be very um, important how, how both midfield um, react into in possession and out of possession. And I think that will, um, I believe that will will make the difference in, in the game um, tomorrow. And I hope Spain can win 1-0. Quickly, around the, the, the table in studio, uh, let me start with you, Coach Price. How do you see it going? I believe Spain will win the game. It's going to be a close game, you know. The odd goal will decide it. Savar? I would say Spain 2-1. Sharona? Spain. No score line, but just Spain. Uh. Coach Radebeckers. Uh, I want to say Spain, where everybody going with Spain. And you know, I, there is this trend where the good team then the next time not do that great and the team that lost, you know, comes back. So I would say 2-1 for Germany. Croatia and Canada also lock horns at tomorrow, Coach Price. Croatia, of course, the runners-up from the last World Cup. Canada, I think, looking quite impressive against the Belgians in their first game. How do you see that one going? Um, Croatia should win the game, but if they don't come prepared to play, Canada will surprise them. They played very well, but I believe that Croatia knows that they need three points of this game and they have to come with the A game. Yeah, we want to see the CONCACAF teams do well, us being from this CONCACAF region, Shavar. How do you see this one going with Croatia um, and, and uh, Canada? Canada coach make adjustment in the forward line, put on a potent striker, and I think they'll win the game. Interesting. Um, Japan and Costa Rica will also go head-to-head. -head. Coach Rademakers, let me get your thoughts on that one. Um, yeah, well, we'll see if Japan can continue. I thought Costa Rica was uh, lacking inspiration and, and lacking real urgency and desire. So hopefully they, they'll find some of that to make it an in interesting game. But Japan has quality, so uh, I would say Japan is going for the win there. Yeah, 2-0, sure we'll right. call it. Oh, Japan is very dynamic, and I think that might be their edge tomorrow. Um, so I will go with Japan. Yeah. Um, Shavar? Japan 3-0. Wow. Coach Price? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Japan, 2-0. Um, mm. Let me get <laughs> the views now of Coach Miguel Coley and Liam. Let me start with you, Coach Coley. Well, I, I believe um, Costa Rica may start with um, Brian Ruiz tomorrow and hope he can give them some inspiration, um, control the game a little bit. But um, I believe Japan will win maybe 2-0. Yeah, and Liam, final thought to uh, you. I mean, yeah, Costa Rica will they'll get there. Maybe in World Cup goal and the, uh, it's going to be 2-1 for Japan. All right, um, interesting predictions indeed. We're going to see how it all plays out tomorrow. Of course, thank you so much uh, for joining us on Final Whistle for today. Thank you to all my panelists, Coach Andrew Price, Shavar Thomas. Eric Radovacas, yeah, through one of us, we're out of time. All um, right. <laughs> thank you to Liam Henriquez and Coach Miguel Coley. Um, we're back with you tomorrow, same time, same place. Until then, I'm Jordan Fort signing out for now. Final Whistle is brought to you by... Get 25% off a 7 or 28-day Prime Rata bundle in the My Digicel app today. Enter to pick and win with Digicel this Christmas. Nothing moves your vibe, your mood, or your appetite like the taste of grace. Pepsi. Cool. You just get up. But you more hungry, man. You're the king of this. Like how up are the king of burgers. Taste rules your way at Burger King. The best tasting burgers under the sun. Up next, the Supreme Ventures Lottery Draw. Welcome to the official live drawing of the Supreme Ventures Lottery Games. This could be your lucky day. Get your tickets out and let the games begin. 
Good afternoon. It is Saturday, November 26, 2022. I'm Lisa and welcome to this afternoon's live Supreme Ventures Drive Time Game Bureau. Now, before we begin, here's a quick look at your 1 and 3 p.m. winning numbers. And remember, all Supreme Ventures live draws are being supervised by the Betting, Gaming and Lotteries Commission and observed by the independent auditing firm PwC. And now, let's put some money in your top draw. This afternoon's jackpot is back at $200,000. Congrats to our 1 p.m. winner. Here are your winning numbers and good luck. Your first winning top draw number for the drive time draw is 11. Your second winning number is 9. Following 9 is 21. Now, if you want to win the jackpot of $200,000, you're going to need 6 as well as 22. And now let's pick your play with our dollars game. I hope you're feeling lucky. Your winning numbers are coming right down. And starting dollars off this afternoon is one. The second winning number is 16. Following 16, we have lucky number seven. And right behind seven is 28. Coming down is ball two. Now your next winning dollars number for the drive time draw is 27. And number nine follows. Following closely is eight. And making its way down is 15. Now your next winning dollars number for this afternoon is 31. And here comes 35. Ending dollars for the drive time draw is 12. And now for some easy winnings with our pick two game. So here goes. Your drive time winning pick two numbers are 18 and 15. So 18 and 15 are your winning pick two numbers. Now up next, you can play it three ways. It's pick three. Your first winning pick three number is three. The second winning pick three number for the drive time draw is zero. And the third and final winning pick three number is five. So three, zero, and five are your winning pick three numbers. Now let's turn up the winnings with pick four. Your first winning pick four number is four. The second winning pick four number for the drive time draw is nine. Here comes your third winning number. What will it be? It's zero. And finally, we have number five. So once more, your winning pick four numbers are four, nine, zero, and five. Now, it is if it wins. So let's heat things up with hot pick. Here we go. And your drive time winning hot pick number is eight. Congratulations to all hot pick winners. Again, your winning number is eight. And cash pop monitor in our run. This week, you can win $280 for every $10 winning cash pop bet. Let's get ready to play our cash pop game for Saturday, November 26, 2022. Now you live to play it, but can you win it? Get ready to be a big cash pop winner and let's see what your drive time winning cash pot number will be. Good luck. And your winning cash pot number is 15. Congratulations to all cash pot winners. Again, the winning number is 15. Now let's mega your winnings. Here we go. And what will be selected? And the mega ball has been selected. And it's now time for some monster winnings. Good luck again. Now let's see what will be selected this afternoon. Get your tickets out. And a white ball has been selected. So remember to go mega and monster six times per day for cash bot for more chances to win. So again, your winning cash bot number is 15. The lucky mark is rat. And for mega, the mega ball was selected for pick three, pick four, hot pick and cash bot. And for monster, a white ball was selected for cash bot. So now let's have a look at your drive time winning numbers. And it is a lot today and the jackpot is all of $181 million. So get your tickets early and come back at 8.25 p.m. for more games games you love to play. I'm Lisa, be kind to one another and have a supreme afternoon. Hope you were a big winner. Play your favorite Supreme Ventures games every day and tune in for our live draw six times a day at 8.30 a.m., 10.30 a.m., 1 p.m., 3 p.m., 5 p.m., and 8.25 p.m. on this station.
Supreme Ventures, making winners every day. Hi there, friends. Welcome to another great weekend edition of Jamaica Magazine. I'm your host, Theodore Henry. So glad you're here today for today's lineup of inspiring features. Sit back and relax. It unfolds after this quick message. Every Jamaican has the right to know what is happening in Parliament, to know when new laws are being passed, and to give their opinions on legislation before either house. Every Jamaican has the right to see their representatives in action, making laws, holding the executive to account, representing the people, working for the benefit of all Jamaica. It is your right to observe first-hand meetings of the Senate, meetings of the House of Representatives, and the meetings of parliamentary committees. You may also take a tour of your parliament. To find out more about the Houses of Parliament, please call 876-922-0200, follow us on Instagram and Facebook, or visit our website at www.japarliament.gov.jm. Our first stop isn't in the classroom, but there's a connection, or rather, there's a connection to those who lead classes. I'm talking, of course, about our teachers, but today, it's about them learning, learning to manage their money and achieve financial stability. Bills paid but still broke sounds like the makings of a major financial problem but there's still time to get ahead of it and get your finances in order. Working out a personalized financial plan can put you on the path to stability. By developing and maintaining responsible financial practices, you could be well on your way to building a solid foundation for wealth creation. Wealth creation is a learned skill, and what better place to facilitate financial knowledge than the classroom? This is true not just for our students, but also for our teachers. Place value is about the number itself. We're committed to the continued improvement of the education sector and look forward to the completion of the very massive task the Ministry of Finance and the Public Service has taken on regarding compensation review. While that is in motion, the Ministry of Education and Youth has moved forward to supporting our education builders by giving them the tools to build wealth. The Ministry has teamed up with stakeholders such as Profit Jumpstarter, a boutique organization that offers investing education. The partnership is offering the teachers online.